showers and thunderstorms may actually increase between now and the 4th of July weekend. I'll show you why that may pose a big high water issue just ahead. There is nothing more important at this point than information to bring about justice. A Lexington murder victim's family asks for help finding his killer. A burglary at a Lexington clothing store caught on surveillance video and the owners say it's not the first time they've been victims of a crime. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good evening to you. We are stuck in a stormy pattern across Kentucky, and it is a WKYT first alert severe weather day. Tonight we're tracking more storms, and it looks like heavy rain could be a big threat. We begin with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. He shows us what's on the first alert defender right now. Chris? Yeah, that's going to be the threat as we go through the next couple of days. Can we get a strong or severe thunderstorm? Yes. Will we? Yeah, the odds are fairly low for severe, true severe weather. But the real threat over the next few days will be too much water. We've had a lot of rain over the past couple of weeks, and that potential is certainly going to be with us into Thursday, Friday, and maybe into the 4th of July weekend. Defender is tracking some rounds of heavy rain producing showers and thunderstorms now, getting closer and closer to Campbellsville and into the western parts of Boyle County, up into Mercer County. Some uh, at least Brief heavy downpours. That little thunderstorm complex across the Lexington Metro now beginning to weaken a little bit as it makes its way across northern Clark County, southern sections of Bourbon, and into Montgomery counties. Down the Mountain Parkway, Licking River Valley, some locally heavy rains. And we're dealing with still some slow moving rain and thunderstorms into parts of southern Kentucky, around the Corbin area, down to Williamsburg, and in across much of the Knox County area. These storms have put down a lot of heavy rains. WKYT weather watcher Jordan Smith out of of the uh, Rockcastle County area, showing a little ponding of water on the roadways from those same storms earlier. He picked up just a little under one inch of rain from, them, uh, from those showers and thunderstorms. But over the next 24 hours, I've got more storms that begin to rumble across central and eastern Kentucky. And when I come back in a little bit, I'm going to show you why those storms may put down a little too much rain. That's in about 10 minutes. We're tracking a breaking news alert in Clark County. The Clark County coroner tells us he's been called to a deadly crash that happened within the past hour on US 60 in front of East Kentucky Power. That's between Winchester and Lexington. We're still gathering details about the crash, but again, the coroner says he has been called to it. We have a crew on the way to the scene, and we'll have updates on WKYT.com and tonight at 11. Today, the family of a Lexington murder victim came forward pleading for help to find his killer. They say someone has the answers they need. 42-year-old Kwame El Amin died last week, days after police say he and four others were shot in Douglas Park. So far, Lexington police have not made any arrests. Monique Blair is tracking the investigation tonight. It's our top story at 6. 14 people from Kwame El Amin's family came forward today. Two of his sisters speaking to us, pleading for help from the public to find their brother's killer. By all accounts from everyone we have heard from, Kwame was simply sitting in the park watching a basketball game. Two Sundays ago, during a Dirt Bowl basketball league game, five people were shot. One of those victims was 42 year old Kwame El Amin. He died four days after the shooting. Kwame has a fiance who is still dealing with the reality of his absence. Two parents who are still alive, six sisters who are still hurting, and three children who will never again feel the love of their father. The day of the shootings also happened to be Father's Day. It was only by the grace of a God that he had not brought his children to the park. That Father's Day. After the shootings, Lexington police told us they were receiving conflicting witness statements. So now Alamine's family is asking anyone who may know anything to speak up. Unfortunately, we live in a community that often lives in fear or praises silence. However, this is not the time to remain silent. Lexington police say if you know anything, there is not a tip too small. And your tips can always remain anonymous. In Lexington, Monique Blair, WKYT. Lexington police told us today that they would not discuss the case as it is an open investigation. They do say, though, they're asking for the public to stand by this family and to stand with them while they search for the person responsible. Tonight, family and friends have gathered to remember another Lexington murder victim. 18 year old Kiara Green was shot one year ago. The case is still unsolved. There's a vigil going on right now in downtown Lexington to honor her. Sam Smith has the story, new at 6. Kiara Green was 18 years old when she was killed. 
She was one of four people shot inside of a home. Friends and family are gathering here at the Fayette County Court Complex to honor her memory. The teen from Nicholasville was the only one killed. The other shooting victims survived the attack at Scottsdale Circle here in Lexington. She's described as a fun-loving person that always had a smile on her face. Her family says she just graduated from East Chestman High School before she was killed. Her family says she planned on going into nursing school because she loved helping people. No arrests have been made in her murder. Friends and family want justice for her. They say they'll never forget her. Yeah, she was very friendly. She was funny, goofy, always there to cheer you up. If you need anything easy to talk to, just there for her family and friends. Police are still asking for tips in this murder case. If you know anything about the shooting on Scottsdale Circle, you're asked to give them a call. In Lexington, Sam Smith, WKYT. The vigil will continue at the courthouse until 7 tonight. New tonight, Lexington police now say a juvenile made up claims that someone else shot him. Police say someone found the victim crawling in the road near South Broadway and Cedar Street early this morning. He claimed someone shot him in the leg, but now police say the juvenile has admitted he accidentally shot himself. No word yet if any charges will be filed. Jury selection continues tonight for the trial of two people accused of killing a Lexington teenager. Dominique Godfrey and Deontay Hayes both face murder charges for the 2012 death of 16-year-old Chaz Black. Court workers tell us even if a jury is seated in the next day or so, opening statements would not begin until Tuesday morning. Police say Godfrey and Hayes shot Black and two other teenagers in an apartment on Palumbo Drive. The owners call it a Lexan clothing business with a positive message, but tonight they're dealing with some negative. They say five burglars broke into the Life's Journey clothing store on North Forbes Road overnight, and cameras caught it all on tape. Sean Moody talked to one of the store's owners. He's tracking the investigation tonight. Life's Journey opened here in January. The owners say they're trying to bring positivity to the community, maybe to prevent things like young people getting into crime. But that doesn't mean they're not a target. Twice since January, they've been broken into. Now, the hoping surveillance video from last night can help solve a crime. Yeah. For the second time this year, a maintenance worker is repairing the damage from a break in. It hurts, man. It really does. It really does. Anthony Lewis said it happened around 1 o'clock this morning. They entered, they entered through the back door. A surveillance camera near the back door shows five people rummaging through the store. Just went through the place uh, trying to find, uh, I guess, I, I want to say money. Yeah. Lewis said the people got away with some clothing. He said it's frustrating because they want this place to be a positive influence on the neighborhood. To help them in any type of way that we can, you know, whether it's, uh, uh, whether it's resources, whether it's, it's schooling, whether it's uh, uh, being able, you know, mentorship. So we just want to be able to just be that light at the end of the tunnel for, for, for people that may need help. In fact, this wall is full of positive messages left by customers at January's grand opening. Lewis said that'll help them push through the frustration. You got to keep going. You know, you can't, regardless how the devil's trying to get you, you know, trying to bring you down, you just got to keep fighting and keep pushing, and nothing can stop you except yourself. And Lewis said they kept their merchandise out of the store today until they're positive it's secure. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. Lewis said the store was planning a community event Sunday afternoon, hoping to meet more people in the area. Another break in at a Central Kentucky business was also caught on tape. In this one, police say two men stole a motorcycle worth $14,000. It happened at a motorcycle shop in Nicholasville. Victor Puente shows us the surveillance video. Despite half a dozen other bikes sitting in that shop, these thieves went straight for a Suzuki near the back of the building. Police say it's likely these two men had been in that business before. The thieves came in through the front door after shattering the glass. They went straight to a custom 2006 Suzuki GSX and pushed it out the door. But it just seems very coincidental that as they made entry, they went straight to that motorcycle as opposed to, to picking other, any other bike of, of equal or higher value in there. The break-in happened Saturday morning around 6 a.m. The men's faces are covered, but the truck they used for the crime was also caught on surveillance. Police believe it's a Ford F-250. We're hoping that somebody will recognize the vehicle that these individuals were in and also may recognize something about these two people. Police say that bike has some damage to the left side from a crash. It was wheeled onto the truck and driven out of sight. And within less than a minute's time, they break the front door, make entry, and are back out of the business with the motorcycle. 
The owner of Insane Customs told me that because of this break-in, they've changed the layout of the store, putting a counter between where the bikes are stored and the front of the building. In Jessamine County, Victor Puente, WKYT. The owner of Insane Customs told WKYT that bike had been at the shop for about a year after the owner damaged it in a crash. Supporters of a county clerk who stopped issuing marriage licenses held a rally for her today. They gathered outside the Rowan County Courthouse for Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis. After the U.S. Supreme Court legalized same sex marriage last week, Davis said she would no longer issue any marriage licenses. The governor has said all county clerks are required by law to issue marriage licenses. One woman told us she's filing a lawsuit against Davis after being denied a license. But those at today's rally said Davis should be able to stand up for her beliefs. I actually got really, really ticked off. We live here, we work here, we pay taxes here, we vote here. It's good that they could come out and defend their rights, but we have that right too, and I believe that Kim has that right. Davis told us this afternoon that she received a threatening phone call from someone claiming to be from the U.S. District Attorney's Office. She said that call, the caller told her to start issuing same-sex marriage licenses by the end of the day or else. But Davis says that call was traced to a man in Massachusetts. She says police are now investigating. The McGoffin County Judge Executive wants the State Court of Appeals to reconsider a decision that would force him out of office. Charles Doc Harden has filed a motion with the court. Last month, the appeals court ruled the Judge Executive's election last year was corrupt and the position would be vacated. Harden's motion will allow him to stay in office while the court considers his request. Harden won that race by just 28 votes, but his opponent, John Montgomery, sued, claiming vote buying and bribes were involved. Harden denies the allegations. If you drove by the Center Point block today in downtown Lexington, you might have noticed one of the cranes moving, but they weren't working on that project. We'll explain in six minutes. And then why a busy Chick fil A restaurant in Lexington will be closing for an entire month. Well, the rain is certainly open for business, and it's going to stay that way for the next several days. As a matter of fact, I'm tracking the possibility of a little too much water when I come back in just a moment.